Let's say you have a dollar, congratulations, and you go to a bank with your dollar and you say, what kind of interest can you give me? What kind of return can you give me on my investment of a dollar? And the bank says to you, my goodness, you have come to the right place. What we're gonna do is a year from now, you get your dollar back and we'll give you a dollar on top of that. Bank's gonna double your money. Now, first of all, if a bank is doubling your money, it's a scam. It's like cryptocurrency hamsters running around in the back. Something is wrong. But let's say that we trust this bank. We can visualize this situation basically as there's our initial dollar, and again, one year from now, we get another dollar, we have two dollars. We should be very happy. But then we start to think, you know what? It's not really fair that the bank gets to hold on to our dollar the whole year long, giving us nothing. We don't get to use our dollar in that year. And they only give us that other dollar after the whole year has gone by. We should be able to check in throughout the year and get some of that money that we're going to get at the end of the year. And so the first thing we do is we think, you know what, let's check in in six months. Halfway through the year, we should get half of the money that's owed to us. So again, we start out here with our dollar, and then after six months, we're going to get 50 cents. But now, when we check in again six months from now, we've had $1.50 in the bank for half the year. Meaning the bank doesn't just owe us the other 50 cents, they owe us half of that $1.50, another 75 cents. And when you add all that together, you don't just get $2, you get $2.25. My goodness, this is like free money. What if we checked in three times a year? What if we checked in 12 times a year? It's this idea that lies behind the mathematical constant E, Euler's constant. Yes, that's right, a guy named Euler named a mathematical constant after himself. No, I'm just kidding. It was actually just a coincidence that it's called E, but a cool one, right? Euler and many others had this idea that if we take this compounding interest throughout the year, a smaller and smaller slice of the dollar that the bank is gonna give us, but we put that money back in the bank, so we start earning the compound interest on that money, what we notice is that, yeah, we're gonna earn more money every time, but not infinitely more money. So for example, when you increase the number of slices to four, you add 25 cents for that first check-in, put that money back in, you get 31 cents for the next check-in, 39 cents for the check-in after that, 49 cents for the check-in after that, and after a year, you have $2.44. Again, definitely better than the $2 when we only checked in at the end of the year, and better than the $2.25 when we just checked in after six months. But you'll notice the rate at which it's getting better seems to be slowing down. When we went to only a yearly check-in to a six month and then a year check-in, we gained 25 cents on top of the $2. Now that we've gone to four check-ins throughout the year, we're only gaining another 19 cents over the 225 we had when we checked in at six months. In fact, we can visualize this and see that as we check in more and more, it appears that we hit a situation with diminishing returns. In fact, even if we checked in essentially infinitely many times throughout the year, we never quite get to a return of $2 and 71 cents, actually 2.7182818284589 and so on. It's that number that we call E. The idea that if you did check in infinitely many times throughout the year, slicing that dollar that the bank is gonna give you into infinitely tiny slices, but then adding them back in the entire time so that you earn interest on those infinitely many tiny slices, you max out at this special number E. And in fact, that special number E is the base for what we call the exponential function. If we were to take these rectangles and actually set them up so that we were looking at the outputs rather than just looking at them along the x-axis, we would see the exponential curve emerge. All those little rectangles represent the interest we're getting in that infinitely tiny slice of time between our check-ins. And as we make those slices smaller and smaller to the point where they are infinitely small, we approach the exponential curve. And yes, I'm also doing another video with the old meme, it's enough slices. 